and he calls them all. And the thing that he does when he calls them to him, he delivers unto them his goods, his possessions, literally his possessions. This was not an absolute gift. I want you to hear me this morning. This was not an absolute gift. In other words, it wasn't saying, here it is, it's all yours. I have no attachment to it any further. There is no place in this parable, none whatsoever, that this speaks as an absolute gift. He delivers to them his goods. Later on, we find the servant that says uh, uh, that he refers to these talents uh, as those that you delivered to me. Amen. Those that you have given unto me, they belong to you. And I give them back. I bring it back to you. Amen. They recognize these are his goods. It's not an absolute gift. When we think about this in this light, we think of gifts that God gives us or that Christ gives us or things uh, that the Lord may bless us to do. It's not yours. Absolutely. It's quiet, but it's true. The gift of preaching is not my absolute gift. It's not just mine. If I take it into account to say the anointing is mine, God gave it to me, that is a heady, high-minded, haughty spirit that God says is a stink in his nostrils. Come on. I realize that the gift can be taken away from me at any time. I recognize that the anointing can be lifted from me at any moment. That the spirit God can elect to pull back. The things that God has given me the talents to do. Amen. Without him I'll fumble. I'll crumble. I'll fail and I fall. That's why it's not an absolute gift. It is God's. Talents you have are God's. The ability you have is God's. The knowledge you have is God's. The anointing that you feel is God's. The spirit you experience is God's. The gifts of healing are God's. The gifts of prophecy are God's. The gifts of tongues are God's. The gifts, amen, of discernment are God's. Every gift in the Bible, amen, they originate in God. They belong to God. They function by God. And he functions them through you and I only as a vessel that he uses to move through. Can you say amen? Now that's good preaching. That's pastoral preaching. You won't hear it from a lot of others. But I want you to know that's where it's at. It's not an absolute gift. Slaves, if we look at this in context, Jesus is speaking the kingdom of heaven is as or like. He said the man that goes into the far country, he calls his slaves and he delivers to them his goods. Slaves during this period could not possess property. Slaves could not possess property. Matter of fact, uh, I've done a lot of study in, in, in early Italy, in early Rome, in the Roman Genesis. And during those periods of time when, when the, the great emperors came into power, they, 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 they found the, uh, the, the, the wealth. Uh, that could come from the farming and and the uh, agricultural, uh, whether it was through the the production of wine and the grapes and or or whatever husbandry it may have been, and they built these extravagant, elaborate villas. These villas were secondary homes to them. They were like retreats, and and the emperors would go back to Rome and, and they would deal with their business in the Senate, and then often they would go out. Many of these emperors were also generals of, of, of military power. And they would go out to battle. And they would be gone for a long period of time while they were gone. And, and, and while they were gone, they had servants. 
uh, that would oversee the affairs of the villa while they were gone. This is the same kind of arrangement that Jesus is talking about. And they would give them uh, uh, jobs to do. They, he would give them responsibilities and obligations. And, and while he was gone, he expected that when he came back that they fulfilled those obligations and those responsibilities. He didn't want to see his villa to be unprofitable. He wanted to know it was turning a profit. He didn't want to be in the red. Is that right? And this is what Jesus is comparing figuratively to those that were around him that understood the period of the time. Uh, they understood this ideal. This was uh, impacted because Rome had dominance in Israel at this time. This was part of the things that were going on at this point. They knew very well what this was. And when Jesus starts talking about it, their, their, their light bulb went off in their head and they, they knew exactly what he was talking about. And Jesus said, I'm going to use this real life illustration to illustrate you, amen, the kingdom of God so that you can relate exactly what it is that God expects from us and what we should expect from God and what we should expect to do for Him. So slaves at this time could not possess property, but He was employed to administer His master's property for His Lord's advantage. The slave was never intended to be given a good to, to the, the advantage of his own self. He was never given a good or a talent or, or, or anything of those resources to benefit his own. Everything that he was given was to be turned around and to benefit his master. Are you following me so far? This is good preaching. Amen. I believe that, that we need to get back to that kind of mentality. The church has lost that. We think, well, if I don't show up, the church can't have church because I've got what they need. Wrong. Wrong. God's got what we need. And if you don't want to show up to be used in what God's given you, God will take it away and give it to somebody who's willing to use it. I felt the Holy Ghost witnessing that. But we, we've almost come to the mentality of this heady, high-minded spirit that says, it's me that possesses it. No, it's him that possesses us. The servant and the slave could own nothing, but what he was given was all about turning back a profit for his master. He, he, he knows, amen, that the money still was not the slaves and legally all that a slave acquired but whatsoever means belonged to his master. These goods, as one writer said, represent a special privilege that was afforded to the slave. Amen. In other words, when the master says, I'm going away and while I'm gone, I'm going to give this to you to take care of and to do something with with, uh, literally the master sees something in you, uh, amen, that he can use. Uh, literally the master says, I trust you, amen. Uh, it's more important for us to recognize that we are the servants of Christ, uh, amen, and not the master rather than thinking that we're the master, uh, amen. We need to get back to a point to recognize that the God of all creation uh, and the king of glory that did bleed, that did die, that did pay the ultimate price he alone ultimately sees something in you that he trusts and that he can use when God calls upon you to do something it's because God says hey man I'm trusting you with this this is mine it belongs to me hey man it's precious it's more precious than gold but I'm putting it into your care and I believing that you're going to do something with it. Oh my, that the church would recognize that we've been given the greatest 
talent of all by the master that's gone back to heaven but soon he will return he has entrusted the church with the gifts of the spirit he has entrusted the church with the anointing and the gift of the Holy Ghost amen but why do we think that the Holy Ghost is only something that makes us dance a little bit in an hour and a half service amen and then we just go home and we be content the next amen uh, six days amen and 22 and a half hours amen I don't believe God that's not even a tenth of our time if you think about it if we're going to give tithe to God it ought to be more than just money you don't need to leave your money out but you need to also give of your time and if there's 24 hours in a day there ought to be two hours and 40 minutes every day at minimum that ought to be devoted to God and God's service recognizing that the master has gone away but when he left he put something in my hands and I don't want to just hide it somewhere I want to make sure that I'm doing what the master amen would expect me to do come on somebody I'm not working for President Obama I'm not working for Capitol Hill I'm not working for President Bush if that makes both sides happy amen I'm not working for the Senate I'm not working for Congress amen I'm not working amen uh, for the local government I'm not working amen for the local officials I'm not even just working for man amen but I'm working for the King of Kings and I'm working for the Lord of Lords if I would give my best to the president how much more should I give my best to the God who loved me when I was unlovable and sent his son that I might have life come on somebody and say man Woo, glory to God I, I, feel, I feel good preaching this morning hold on to your seatbelt you get a free lunch out of it I'm buying everybody's dinner today it's on me. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> but when the master says, he said, the kingdom of the heaven, these goods, they represent a special privilege that was afforded to the slave. I'm leaving, but I'm trusting you with my villa. I'm trusting you with my belongings. I'm trusting you because without that, these people could not live in luxury and travel the way they traveled without it because if they lost it, they lost their means of income. And, and the master says, listen, I am trusting you. So how does he do? What does he do? The master begins to distribute. There's a distribution. The Bible said he delivered to him his goods, not their goods, his goods. And unto one, the Bible said that he gave five talents to another two and to another one. I thought about titling this message this morning, Eight is Enough. <laughs> but I was afraid only about ten of you that did laugh get it. <laughs> we tell our age, Eight is Enough? What's that? It's a TV show back years ago. <laughs> Amen. But notice what happens. He, he delivers to them the talents, one talent, according to a, a, a commentary that was written around 1800. Uh, it, 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 it typified and it was written in Europe and it talks about the comparative of one talent at that time in comparison to the British pound. And the British pound would have been equivalent, and this is just one talent, uh, was equivalent to 400 pounds, which would have been equal to $676 in American money in the 1800s. And, and this, this talent was not just something meager. And he gave five of them to one, two to another, and one to the other one. It wasn't just a meager thing. It was something that was important. It was something substantial. Uh, though sometimes we often, when we read this word talent, we, we also uh, look at it meaning our abilities, what we can do. It's our talent. It's my talent to sing. It's my talent to do this. It's my talent to do that. But here Jesus is representing it to a possession, a uh, possession of money, monetary value that the master gave the slave to use for the master's profit. In verse 15, the Bible said that he gave it to every man. 
I want you to say that with me. To every man. Say it again. To every man. Uh, not just meaning man, but mankind. But to every man, to every one of these slaves. When he called his slaves, he didn't leave any of them out. <laughs> Amen. These were all his servants, and he didn't leave any of them out. He distributed to every one of them. No one that comes into the kingdom of God can ever say successfully,